Uh, as I said, uh, you are uh, very much blessed, and uh, that's a good thing. When I've been here 2019, the first thing I've, I stayed at the single dormitory at uh, Chapel House. Is it Chapel House or John Chapman House? Uh, uh, I use. I hear other, uh, other people saying Chapel House, other people saying John Chapman House. So maybe the two are correct. <laughs> so, the first thing I've noticed uh, when I talked with Al Lucabio, uh, the minister of St. James Croydon, is that I told him that students at Moore College eat like kings. <laughs> Uh, so that's a good thing, and uh, I'm really sure that there are no complaints uh, about food, because you have good foods, you have everything you need, so that's the reason why I say that you are very much blessed. Uh, compared to the country where I come from, that Sometimes we struggle and sometimes students doesn't, sometimes students don't eat uh, if there are no food. So because of the issue of poverty in my country, there's, there's a danger of syncretism. That people looking for all the means to receive material blessing. But I've also realized that the same problem that we call syncretism can also happen here. Can also happen in a context where you have abundance, uh, ab abundance of material, material uh, uh, blessing, uh, material things. The danger is that if we have everything we need. We have all the food we need. We have all the money we, feed, we need. We have all the, the stuff we need. The danger is that we no longer depend on God. And we might not be aware that all the things we have is from God. And instead of fully trusting God, we may trust on what we have. We, we might trust on everything we have. We might trust our money. We might trust all material things we have. And that is as well the syncretism the danger of syncretism, because it is idolatry, but in a different uh, picture. Well, idolatry in my country would be ancestral worship, spirit worship, consulting diviners, and so on. But here, the danger of idolatry is uh, trusting what we have. But the, the letter of James reminds us that we need to credit everything to God. We need to trust God and depend on God. So the two verses we have been... The book of James uh, teach Christians that what they believe must affect what they do, what, what they do in their life. So... Uh, Faith is very practical. Faith is not only abstract thinking. Faith must be active. And faith without work is dead. The famous verse of James. Uh, three things I want to uh, highlight. Uh, in, in this verse, uh, James says that God needs to be credited for all good things, then Jesus is the best gift that God has given us. And uh, last is 
uh, be careful, uh, as I said, the danger of syncretism. All good and perfect gifts come from God above. This means that they come to us from God. It does not, it does not ascend anything bad. That, that's what James says when he says, uh, do not be uh, deceived. Uh, he does not send temptation or lead us into sin. In the contrary, he sent Jesus to us. And uh, Jesus is the best gift that God has given us. All of the gifts from God, the gift of the new birth to his children is the best. God chose to make us his children as, as a mother gives birth to a child, so God gives life to those who trust in the Lord Jesus. God has made us his own children. That is the best gift from God. The best gift is Jesus Christ himself. Uh, the best gift is not what we have uh, in our life. It's not money, it's not food, it's not secure life. The best gift is Jesus Christ and the, the new birth in Jesus Christ uh, to make us trust Jesus Christ and all things Christ has done for us. That's the best gift ever. Then Uh, I like talking about my context because that's something uh, I know very much. Uh, we really wish, as, as a theological college, we really, really wish that uh, students understand that very well. And all our new Christians, because the church is growing in Madagascar, and contrary to the West, uh, the church in Africa, especially Madagascar where I am, the church is growing so much, and, and you will find everyone are believers. Uh, though we have challenge of Islam, Islam is growing as well. Uh, 15 to 20, 15 percent of the population, but a Christian is the majority. You will find everyone are Christian, everyone are believers. There are no atheists in, in Madagascar. Even that word, people there don't know that that word exists. I only knew it when I've been interacting, interacting with uh, Western people. Uh, I did, I've learned some apologetics uh, from uh, Oxford Center for uh, Christian Apologetics. I, I did some apologetic course. But by the end I finished it, uh, I told them that all things I've learned was irrelevant. Uh, for, for my country. Because in uh, systematic theology, apologetics, philosophy of religion in the West, uh, they spend too much time uh, working on the evidence of God's existence. So the question we had, we discussed together in discussions was, does God exist? Uh, can someone uh, raise from the dead? Uh, I mean, I told them those are meaningless questions. Uh, irrelevant to my context because all people are believers. All are believers. So the three, three main beliefs in Madagascar are Christianity, traditional religion, and Islam. So all are believers. So question like, uh, uh, can someone raise from the dead to, to, to define the resurrection, or does God exist, a science and religion? Uh, those are ir irrelevant. Uh, questions for us. But the relevant question for us for apologetics is that how would people uh, 
be convinced of the uniqueness of Christ and the sufficiency of Christ. And that's the struggle we have as a theological college. Students come with a mind of prosperity gospel. Though the church is growing, 70% of people in church are uh, doing syncretism. Yes, we come, we believe in Christ, uh, we believe in God, we believe in Christ, we, we sing and so on, but when we are sick, we go and consult the diviners because they want to be healed. Uh, they want their problem to be sorted out right away. So sufficiency of Christ and uh, uniqueness of Christ. And during the three-year study at our college, we struggle to make students to understand that and also the church uh, to understand that Christ is sufficient. You don't need other belief. You don't need other thing. But third and last thing I want to tell you from that is that the same for you as well, brothers and sisters. Bless God that you have everything you need. You are not in the same context. I'm not saying that there are no poor people here. I'm not saying that there are no people who are struggling here. Otherwise, Angli Care would not exist. Uh, the time I realized that Angli there is an organiz organization called Angli Care here, uh, then I s said, oh, there might be some people who need others' care as well here. So I'm not saying that there are no homeless people here and so on, but not in the same context as we have them here. But you have everything you need, so bless God for that, but be careful. Be careful that the same things that happen in Madagascar, syncretism, do not happen to you. Trust God, trust Christ. The best gift that God has given us is Christ. So let us be like Paul, apostle, as he wrote to the Ephesians, that I am, I am content in everything. Though there are foods or no foods, there are money or no money, or in struggle, though my houses are burned, though that will not happen here, uh, trust God alone and trust Christ alone. And that also is my word of goodbye. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every blessings you have given us because those come from you and make us to only trust in you in all our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.